What is a PhD? It's a common enough question that I get asked. The other day in a reel, I explained how researchers and scientists don't get paid for the results of their research that they publish in academic journals. Oftentimes, it is people who have a PhD or students who are earning PhDs who are writing and publishing these articles. And people who are reviewing these articles often also have PhDs. But what is a PhD? A PhD is the highest research degree one can typically hold. It stands for Doctor of Philosophy. That means that someone who holds a PhD has typically invented new knowledge within their discipline or greatly contributed to an existing piece of knowledge, expanding it. In that sense, earning a PhD marks you as an expert in your field and the expert in your individual topic. At some universities, a PhD is also called a DPhil, like at the University of Oxford, or as we at Cambridge call it, the other place. However, holders of both either a PhD or a DPhil are a doctor in philosophy. This means that they can use the title doctor. Philosophy being part of the degree name doesn't mean that their degree is in philosophy. It just points back to them having invented new knowledge or contributed to a field. This usage of the word doctor is older than the use by medical professionals, those who owed MDs or medical doctors, who also modernly use the term doctor. Medical doctors go through intense training in physiology, pharmacology, medicine, human biology, and much more, and they complete practicums and go through lots of training. However, they don't necessarily produce original research like a PhD student does. Though the structure and length of time may vary by institution, university, or college, a PhD typically lasts anywhere from three to seven years, the longer side being those places where one typically also earns a master's degree as part of their PhD, whereas here at Cambridge, for example, they're three to four years because you are typically required to already hold a master's degree or equivalent other experience. During the course of your degree program, you will identify gaps in the literature that will become your area of research, and that will become your specialty within your area. And one typically also publishes articles or papers in journals while completing their PhD, which then typically become parts or chapters or contribute to your thesis. Your thesis is typically the largest part of your PhD, and it is what you are examined on later. Typically, at the end of one's PhD, one also has an oral exam or an oral defense, where they are examined based on the content of their thesis or dissertation. And they are asked questions about their research, they may be asked to defend different decisions they've made, and they may pass or they may fail. And if you pass, you typically pass with corrections, either major corrections, meaning you need to do a lot of revisions, minor corrections, meaning a few revisions, and then you resubmit after these, and your examiners decide if you passed or failed. Uh, though technically there are other outcomes, one could, and this doesn't happen in many cases, pass with no corrections. One could fail outright, also this very rarely happens. Or here at Cambridge, for example, one could be mastered out, in that they could be offered a master's degree for their work rather than a PhD. If you have any more questions about PhDs, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you're a PhD student yourself, feel free to say hi and let me know where you're studying.